Hi, my name is Pete and I'm going to show you how to play Another Friday Night by Ben Howard. Now this is by far and away my favourite song that he's done since anything on I Forget Where We Were, if I'm honest. I like the Noonday Dream album and I think there's some good songs on there, but for me, with Ben's songs, it's always been about the finger picking and this is a classic acoustic guitar, finger picking, um, yeah, it's just got all the ingredients that I like in Ben's songs. So I'm going to show you how to play it. Right, tuning first of all. Um, took me a while to work this out. A little bit of trial and error, a little bit of looking at what other people were doing on, on YouTube and Reddit. And then eventually I came up with um, C, G, C, F, F, C. And then you need to capo your guitar on the third fret covering just strings five to one. You can either use a standard capo for this or you can do what I've done which is get a, a brass C1 shub capo or similar and then you can cut it down to size so it only covers the first five strings. It's quite easy to do if you get a sharp knife and mark through the rubber and just slightly score the brass so you can see where you're cutting halfway between the sixth and the fifth strings. Take it off, put it in a vise, get a hacksaw to it, trim it down, file the edges so there's nothing sharp on it, cut the rubber down to size, slip the rubber back on and it's all good. The benefit of having a dedicated capo that you've trimmed that covers just the five frets is that if you're transitioning round, if you're working your way around the capo, there's less at the bottom here to catch with your hand and knock off, um, knock off line and you know ruin the tuning or similar. So that's uh, that's what I use on this. So when you've got your capo in position, then then the the tuning should sound like this. So your first string is a C and then second string will sound A sharp or B flat. Third string sounds D sharp. Fourth string and fifth string will both sound G sharp. And then the first string sounds as D sharp. Right, so where to begin? How about the beginning? Okay, um, one thing to point out on this, the tab, all the numbers on the tab are relative to the nut. When I use Guitar Pro, the, the software I use for writing out the tabs, if I do a full capo, then all the numbers are relative to the capo. But when I only use a partial capo, Guitar Pro gets a bit confused by that. And it just seems to reference all the tab positions relative to the, the nut. Okay, so to, to start then, the, the first bar, put your middle finger on the sixth string on the fifth fret and your ring finger on the fourth string on the fifth fret above the nut. And as is often the way with Ben's songs, the first couple of bars are kind of free time and it's just like he's he's sort of feeling his way through the chords and, and just listening to the guitar and the tuning before he digs in and plays it. And I sometimes wonder if he's doing it as a hint for us to work out what the tuning is because you can often hear which, which strings are ringing open. So um, I'm playing 6, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. All right, six, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, six. No movement on the left hand, just it's a fretted chord shape. Then into the second bar, I move my ring finger to the seventh fret on the fourth string and move my index finger to the fifth fret on the fifth string. And again, I'm playing six, four, three, one, two, three, four, five, six and then the first three strings like a little run one two three like that or three two one rather play the second bar again that's the third bar that little run 
And then into the fourth bar, I'm going to move my index finger to cover string six and five. So I'm sort of pressing halfway in between the two strings and my finger pad is covering string six and five, fifth fret. Don't worry if you accidentally touch the fourth string because it's being fretted higher up, so it won't, it won't affect the sound. And I'm playing six, five, four, six, three, six, two, six, one, six, 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 six like that. And that takes you into the verse shape, which is bar six, and it's labelled B on the tab. If you put your index finger on your left hand, back on the fifth string, fifth fret, leave your uh, ring finger on the seventh fret, fourth string, and watch the right hand here. This is the picking pattern that is about 95% of, the, of the, the verse and the chorus in the song. I'm plucking six, five, four, with thumb index middle and then six three one using index and ring okay six five four six three one six five four six three one So bars six and seven are literally that pattern, twice. Bar seven. And then into bar eight, you're gonna put your index finger on strings six and five on the fifth fret. And if you can, move your ring finger up to the eighth fret. I didn't do this on my cover, but since listening to Ben play it, I think this is what's happening. Uh, particularly because you can hear a kind of a, sometimes you can hear like a, like a slip note later in the song. So again, six, five, four, six, three, one. Then back down to the seventh fret for bar nine. So um, with some words then, this would sound something like this. They found him in the gutter at the business end of another Friday night. Someone had clearly been there before. I didn't feel I had to ask them why. I have never understood three repeats to know the reasons for everyone else. And then as you come up to bar 10, bars 10 and 11 are the same as 6 and 7. Sometimes you don't need sympathy to get the words. I, I leave my ring finger on the on the 7th fret um, for bar 12. And to be honest, you can just about get away with leaving it there as I, as I did in the cover. No, no one's picked up and gone, hmm, your ring finger was in the wrong place when you were playing that. So... Uh, yeah, um, bar 12, um, 6, 5, 4, 6, 3, 1, 6, 5, 4, 3, 1. One more of those little shapes into bar 13. And then we're going to start transitioning and moving up the fretboard. So the second half of bar 13, I'm going to put my ring finger, no, I'm going to put my middle finger on the 7th fret, 6th string. Same shape. Yeah? Six, five, four, six, three, one, and then into bar 14, move your middle finger up to the eighth fret above the nut, bring your ring finger onto the fifth string. So you've, you've gone from there, seven, seven, six and four, to eight, eight on string six and five, and put your index finger on the seventh fret on the third string. And again, it's the same right hand pattern. Do that twice, yeah, once, twice, into bar 15, move again, so your middle finger is going to slide to the 10th fret, your ring finger is going to drop to the 4th string, also on the 10th fret, and your index finger will be covering the 3rd string on the 9th fret. Again, same right hand. Hang on. So 
there's two of those. So, and then into bar 16, this is a little bit fiddly. You're going to move your middle and ring fingers up two frets, but drop them down a string each. So instead of six and four, they're now going to cover five and three. Meanwhile, your index finger is going to drop on the tenth fret above the nut on string four. So you're on that shape. And the picking, this is the first time that the picking changes. So I'm plucking six, five, four, six, four, three, and that's index middle, index middle, and then thumb again, six, three, one, back to six, one, um, six, five, four, six, four, three, that's index and middle for those, and then six, three, one, index and ring, and then six again, five, four, six, three, one, that's bar 16 and 17. So played at speed, it would sound like this. So let's just do it slowly again. Um, I'm going to just do it from bar 10 through to there with words as well, just so you can sort of see how it fits together. So, sometimes you don't need sympathy to get the words right caught in language. He was sometimes, and that for, for bar 18, sometimes. Same as bar 14, you're dropping down to the 8th fret position, 8, 8, open 7, sometimes, up to the 10th fret, that's enough. So into bar 20, I'm in the 12, 10, 12 position, but I'm now using the standard right hand picking pattern, the 6, 5, 4, 6, 3, 1, like that. That's enough. And they were singing just at the end, just take everything off and pluck three and one open like that. That's enough. And they were singing. Ooh. And then here you're down into the, this is into the chorus shape now. So the reason you've just played the last three notes of the 21st bar with nothing held down is so you can get down to the third fret, sixth string, index finger behind the capo. And um, it's hard to tell when you listen to this on the record whether or not he's fretting the third string at the fifth fret. I've put it in the tab because I think it sounds okay, but it sounds all right either way, to be honest. Um, it might be played open, it might be fretted. And I've got my thumb pushing in the middle of the neck between the fourth and the fifth fret. So sort of level with the fret wire there, just, just as a brace, really. It's, it's, it's there, but it's not, it's behind. Um, and I'm playing six, five, four, six, three, one, again. Ooh, it looks like the end again. So that was bars 22, 23, 24, 25. Let's just slow that down. So, Sixth string, third fret, index finger behind the capo, ring finger, third string, um, fifth fret above the nut, and I'm playing the, the standard pattern, six, five, four, six, three, one. Ooh, it looks like the... So second half of bar 23, I'm just moving my index finger down to the, the second fret above the nut and everything else is open. It looks like the end again. So all of bar 24 and 25 is played with index finger fifth fret, ring finger seventh fret above nut, and that same six, five, four, six, three, one, and 
around again. Uh, and then into the um, 26th bar. Index finger is now going to cover strings 6 and 5. And if you can sneak your ring finger to the 8th fret, but if you can't keep it on the 7th, nobody will notice. Uh, nobody did on my cover. Um, <clears throat> so 26th fret. Her body. And then 27th bar, I'm going to put my middle finger on the 7th fret and just bring my ring finger to the 7th fret as well. 6th and 4th, 6th string and 4th string. Bleaching. And then 8th fret position with the index finger on the 3rd um, string, 7th fret. Out into the waves, 10th fret position. It's still the loud, and then up to the 12th fret position. Loudest thing. So, and that again, I'm still doing these six, five, four, six, three, one there. It's still the loudest thing. Open just at the end of the 34th bar, and back down again because you're going to repeat it all again for the second half of the chorus. Um, ooh, I wish I had all my friends out there drinking the sunny afternoon into oblivion, but that's not your fault. So as we get around to the that's not your fault bit, it's into the bar 32, it's back down to the 8th fret position, but that's not your fault. Up to the 10th fret, how could that be your... That, and that's all on the standard 654631 pattern, how could that be your... And then into bar 34, 12, 10, 12 position, fault. Um, this time it's 6546... This is different actually. Six, five, four, six, five, five, three. Six, five, four, six, five, three, six, five, four, six, five, three, like that. So. So if you look on the tab when you download this from the website, you'll see that bars 34 and 35 are the end of the first chorus, which is... Whereas bar 36 and 37 is the end of the second chorus, which is um, the standard pattern. And then there's two bass notes, and then he goes into the solo. Now, um, the, the solo is complicated, uh, I'm not going to lie, and it's going to make this video very long if I explain the solo now. So what I recommend you do is, is get comfortable with, with the, the verse and the chorus shapes, because the, the picking for the solo is, is in, in many places quite different to what's going on, whereas the chorus and the verses do have a, a lot of repetition. Um, when you listen to Ben play it, sometimes you hear all sorts of extra notes chucked in here and there, and, and just the, the nature of acoustic guitar picking, it, it lends itself to that. So sometimes when he's, when he's working through the... Um, the verse shape, sometimes you hear a little triple note like that. Sometimes you just hear sort of a single note where it's just plucked the open second string. And so on. Practice that, get good at that first, and then hopefully I'll get the, the solo video up fairly soon, because, um, yeah, I meant to say thanks ever so much for everybody who's given me positive feedback and likes on my cover. I think it's been one of my most popular covers so far. It's had nearly 2,000 views in the space of three weeks, and a lot of good comments, and a lot of people clamouring for a tutorial. So, um I'm going to go get on with part two now, the, uh, the solo. I'll see you next time. Cheers.